Hello, my name is William Fernandez and welcome to my channel Psyche and Arts. This video is part of the Top 15 Movies collection and introduces the Top 15 Gay Themed Movies collection. In this countdown, the Top 15 Gay Themed Comedies. Guys and Balls Germany, 2004, directed by Sherry Horman With Maximilian Bruckner, Lisa Maria Potho, Dietmar Bär, Saskia Vester and David Rutt This is probably the most campy comedy of our list we forgive some of the comedy clichés because it brings us a heartwarming and nevertheless funny story. Yes, we have seen it before, but this time it's really gay. We know that Germans are not famous for their sense of humor. But they can reach, in rare cases, a very high level of sophistication in their comedies like Soul Kitchen and Papa Antiportes. Well, this is not the case. It's really over the top. The film has it all. Gay sportsmen, transgender, gay love affairs, bears, leather clothes, family crisis, football game and even a Sunday school dancer. I have gar keine Freundin. Ich hatte nie eine und ich werde auch nie eine haben. Also, naja, jedenfalls nicht so wie ihr denkt. Und das liegt daran, dass, ähm, ich meine, ich wollte sagen, dass... was macht ihr eigentlich hier? Fußball. Du spielst Fußball? Ja. In der schwulen Mannschaft. Lose Cannon. Italy 2010, directed by Ferdinand Ozpetek, with Ricardo Scarmazio, Nicola Grinaldo, Alessandro Preziozzi, Ilaria Occhini, and Ennio Fantastichini. Loose Canals is not a masterpiece among comedies, but it deserves to be in our list because once you forgive the choreography sequences and a few unnecessary characters, we have a beautiful and funny movie. It has a well-crafted and smoothly unfolding plot, full of lovable characters and hilarious situations. La scena vuole fare un discorso a tutti. La prima è che non ho mai studiato economia e commercio a Roma. Sono laureato in lettere da un anno. La cosa importante, Antonio, è che sono gay. Fourth Man Out. It's from the United States, 2016, directed by Andrew Nackman and written by Aaron Danzig. With Ivan Todd, Parker Young, Charles Overstreet, and John Gabers. Fourth Man Out has a predominantly male cast and all hunks. But don't expect to see stereotype figures from the gay scene. What brings this film to our list is precisely the simple way in which it shows how there is gay life outside exclusively gay bars and gay clubs. But the highlight of the film, and exactly where the funniest moments unfold, is when three straight men try to find a relationship for their gay friend. In addition to good laughs, the film also provides an optimistic view of friendship, when it is free from prejudice and judgment. Billy's Hollywood Scream Kiss From 
the United States, 1998. Written and directed by Tom Milhey, with Sean Hayes, Brad Rue, Meredith Scott Lim, Richard Gannon. You may know him from Party Glances. It is a pretty movie. Beautifully shot, written and directed. This is sweet and romantic. Influenced just a bit by the terrible cliches of the romantic comedies. But don't worry, these references don't destroy the beauty and the humor of this story about idealism and disillusion. Yeah. You're gay too, man. Do I act gay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. Why does everyone keep saying that? Oh, but let me tell you, sweetie, you, <laughs> you are definitely not gay. Well, no, actually, I'm, uh, I'm not. I'm not gay. Well, welcome to Catalina. Thanks. These are gonna be your beds here. Mm -hmm. Oh, and while we're getting acquainted, I'd like to have you both know that I'm gonna be tripping tonight. Oh, that's nice. Hey, it's Saturday night, and every Saturday night, I take acid. And when I dose, I like my music to be really loud. Okay, then. Billy! Billy! Number 11, Breakfast with Scott. It is from Canada, 2007, directed by Laurie Lee, with Tom Cavana, Ben Shankman, and Noah Burnett. Breakfast with Scott is a beautiful played comic drama about a gay couple faced with being surrogate parents to a child, when the boys almost related to their mother dies. They face the usual insecurities of being new parents, together with fears of being the gay couple with the kid. That said, Well, not with Scott. Broken-hearted first, slowly he begins to change the routine of the house. He brings fun, joy in his small things, and teaches a few lessons to this super-conventional gay couple. The film, in addition to the funny moments, tells us about the prejudices that many gay people have against effeminate guys. Trick USA 1999 Directed by Jim Fall With Christian Campbell, John Paul Peacock, Tori Spelling and Laurie Bagley Trick end up in our list of the top 15 because with remarkable performances it's one of the few films of its decade that does not feature dramatic issues such as the pain of coming out of the closet, AIDS and homophobia. It is a simple, light and humorous cut of a night in the life of the protagonists. Nightlife, musical theater, cruising, drag queens and male strippers. Could it get any gayer? Yes. Tori Spelling in hilarious moments as Ravelli C. Oh no. And then? The next day, when I called the number he'd given me earlier, it was the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens, and would you believe, they never even heard of a Mark Miranda. But, am I bitter? Absolutely. Let's face it, Gabriel, you're just another little phone number on a dirty cocktail napkin shoved into the bottom of his pocket. Good boy. La Casa Full France and Italy, 1975 Directed by Eduardo Bolinaro With Hugo Tomazzi and Michel Serrault It is the first film adaptation of Jean Poiré's 1973 play of the same name The manager of a central play nightclub featuring drag entertainment and his star attraction are a gay couple Hell breaks loose when his son brings home a fiancé and her super-conservative parents. Thanks it was produced much before the so-called millennials created the cancel culture. Because it is a ultra-gay movie featuring ultra-straight actors, it wouldn't stand a chance in this idiocracy. 
It may be a bit over the top and kind of campy, but one should not forget that it was a long way until Australia gave us Priscilla the Queen of the Desert and RuPaul spread drag culture all over the world. When it comes to gay comedy, we can certainly say that La Cage Full is a pioneer. Je rien fait, je parlais avec Laurent. Il fait des bulles. Non. Il fait des bulles avec son chewing-gum pendant que je chante. Non. Ben, il n'a pas à faire des bulles avec son chewing-gum pendant que je chante. Et pourquoi il fait des bulles Crazy. Canada, 2006. Directed by Jean-Marc Vallier. With Marc André Gronda. Michel Coté, Daniel Po, and Pierre Luc Billion, the award winning director of Dallas Buyers Club and Wild, brings us this comic drama. It tells us the story of Zach, a French Canadian guy, from birth to 24 years old of age. Born on Christmas Day 1960, to his devoted Catholic mother, Zach is her miracle, both because he was born on the same day as Jesus Christ, a fact that Zach always hated, and because a mystic Tupperware saleswoman once told her that he had the power to heal. But more than worship Jesus, Zach is interested in David Bowie, kissing and earning his father's respect. When it comes to beauty emotional and even so funny segments, Few can do it better than Jean-Marc Vallier. Mambo Italiano 2003, Canada Directed by Emile Gotvo With Luck Kirby, Tim Post, Ginette Reno, Peter Miller and Paul Sorvino this is an adaptation of Stevie Galuccio's autobiographical play of the same name. It's an unpretentious and cheerful family comedy. It tells about the cultural conflicts of Italian immigrants in Montreal and centers on the comic drama of the Barberini family when its only son informs everyone that he is gay. It's a movie full of likable characters played by a super talented cast. Leaving was easy. Bringing them to visit my new apartment was the hard part. This building got to be 100 year old. Well, that's part of its charm. What's so charming about it being old? We're old. We're not charming. Oh, Mama, don't touch anything until the cops get here. I think you live like a pig. But I don't know why this had to happen to us. I don't know. No, me, Pa. It happened to me. I'm the one who got robbed, right? No, Rob. This is act of a terrorism against the Italian oh. people. I want you to move back home. Yeah. No, Ma, I am not moving back home. Right. Come in at your own risk. Oh. oh, officer, thank God you're here. Tell my son that this is not a safe neighborhood. Well, these things happen all over the city. Avanti. Nino. That's right. Who are you? <laughs> Nino. Gino, this is Nino. Lina's son. Nino, Angelo, you remember? Actually, that's why I took the call. I want to see what my... Uh, Old Bud was up to. Beautiful thing. UK, 1996, directed by Hattie McDonald. With Linda Harry, Glenn Berry, and Scott Neal. Many people reject Beautiful Thing as a comedy, due to its high drama content and because it doesn't try to be funny. But isn't that so with most of the best comedies ever made? We couldn't have left Beautiful Thing out of our list. It's a warm and very well-directed comedy, with a cast that takes us right into the screen. Yes, it is a movie about coming of age, but don't be fooled. The most interesting moments features a group of mature and talented actors. They tell me the fall Perfect. Sorry? I think we'll find the word pervert is a serious no-no. Anyone who goes out with that old slapper has to be a pervert. Come again. Your bird. 
Sandra? She talks to me like I've got cunt ring on my forehead. You shouldn't use words like bird. Dear X. Taiwan, 2018, directed by Chi Yan Chu, with Roy Xu, Yan Chuan Si, and Spark Shen. An independent theater producer and actor that has a long term love relation with a married man was left as the main insurance beneficiary when his lover dies. The teenager often becomes trapped in the middle of a bitter field between his mother and the free spirit actor. The cinematography is so beautiful, the acting is on point, full of hilarious moments, and the journey taken by the main characters is a lesson for life in art form. <laughs> Jeffrey USA 1995, directed by Christopher Ashley, with Steven Weber, Michael T. Wise, and Patrick Stewart, with appearances of Christine Baranski, Peter Jacobson, Nathan Lane, and Sigourney Weaver. Also, Katina Jimmy, Cameron Mannheim, and Olympia Tukakins. Jeffrey is the real deal when it comes to gay comedies. It's a story of a young man that, in time of age, decides to give up sex and, in the very next day, meets the hunk of his dreams. Stephen, Michael and Patrick give us worthy performances in a film that very few know of. Clever, funny, sexy and sometimes bring us to tears. It is a must-see. Did you love your mother? Um, yeah, yeah, I guess. Don't lie to me. Okay. I'll call her. Right. Did she withhold? Well... Was there abuse? No, I don't... Dig, dig deep? Yes, definitely. Yes, yes. <laughs> Go see her. Okay. Tell her. Tell her. Mom, Mom, you were chilling. Yeah, chilly. You forgot my birthday. Damn. You beat me with a baseball bat. bat. But I understand. I understand. I forgive. I forgive. I love you. I love you. And Mom... Mom. Now you're old. Oh, God. You've got a plastic hip. <laughs> and I've got the bat! Right. Next! No. <laughs> yes! Yes! The homosexual. I can walk. If you could always walk. Shut up. Wedding Banquet From Taiwan, 1993, directed by Ang Lee with Winston Chow, Mitchell Liechtenstein and Mei Chin. Wedding Banquet is for the most part a buoyant film about the importance of the individual and his personal proclivities in a society which favors conformity and precedence. Lee cleverly probes, with pointed humor, at traditional Chinese notions regarding sex, sexual desire and orientation in the busy city of Manhattan, New York. Wedding Banquet talks to the audiences in many different levels, no matter the approach, political, social, philosophical or a comedy of errors, it is always a joy to watch. Hello. Hello. Here, if I give you a buck, will you stop playing for a minute? Simon? Yeah, where are you? In the city. Come here and meet me. I'll take you out to dinner. Uh, you still mad? It's just we've been planning this trip for months. All you had to do was tell me that... But I can't control when zoning boards me. 
We'll get time together, I promise. Look, just come home tonight. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Sure, I'm going by the Williamsburg building first. Be home by seven. Long for flavor, her kisses, I savor, have a lover, the pig named Pauline. Ideal Home. It's from the United States, 2018, directed by Andrew Fleming, with Steve Coogan and Paul Rudd. In an inspired piece of casting, pairing Steve Coogan and Paul Rudd as a bickering gay couple is Ideal Home's bright spark. The two veteran actors bring their impeccable comedy timing to the roles of Erasmus, a TV chef with an inflated ego, and his TV director partner, Paul, who spend their days on set together trading snippy remarks. The truth find their lives uprooted when Erasmus' 10-year-old grandson arrives at their door looking to stay in their custody. The message soon becomes clear to these two stranger lovers. If they can learn to love the boy, maybe they can learn to love each other again. Ideal Home is genuine but never preachy in their depiction of a gay couple bringing up a child. The film prioritizes humor over offering any real insight into the challenge of parenthood with two fathers. But Coogan and Rudd are genuinely funny and they share real romantic chemistry along the film to tap into a fountain of full humor and heart. Ditto the galvanized tin. Please, please remove the ghastly bandanas from the goblets. You young man, put your camera there, pointing that way. Look at him. He's like the gay Butch Cassidy, except not Butch. If only we had a producer who understood that objects exist in a space. Wouldn't that be wonderful? If only you came to production meetings to communicate your ideas in advance. Oh, but that would cut into your rigorous drinking and masturbation schedule. Do you guys do this at home? Oh, no, we don't get along this well at home. Why don't you leave him? I probably will. But, you know, part of me wants to stick around just to watch him die. Torch Song Trilogy From the United States, 1988 Directed by Paul Bogart With Harvey Feierstein, Anne Bancroft, Matthew Broderick and Brian Kirby Torch Song Trilogy is on the top of our list because it's a deeply affecting film Emotional and yet funny to the extreme It works marvelously well Thanks mainly to the authentic way Harvey tells it as Arnold. There are such wonderful moments, high drama, deep sadness and almost unbridled joy that watching Torch Song Trilogy could be considered a riding on the roller coaster of emotions. In this movie, Feinstein and Bogart give us the power to see the good and the bad in the characters in all their technicolor differences. And even so, there is no room for judgment. I hope you enjoyed our list. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Bye and auf Wiedersehen.